good morning good morning good morning pray that you all had a sweet sleep last night that you woke up with bells and whistles on and ready to take on this day a new day that we have never seen before but it's a day that the lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it hey there heartbeat belinda heartbeat elaine and heartbeat donald Heartbeat Alia, Heartbeat Melodia, hey Heartbeat Yolanda, good morning, good morning, hey Heartbeat Puddin' Pop, Heartbeat Christine, hey Heartbeat Troy, good morning, good morning, welcome to the Gathering of Hearts this morning, I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer, and this morning we are continuing on in our series, the Daily Dosage is the Power of of Holy Communion, the power of Holy Communion. And so yesterday we got started talking about the power of Holy Communion. And I gave you guys some background, you know, talked about um, what communion is, um, uh, the frequency that you can do it, the types um, of communion. And so we're going to continue on in that. So yesterday we talked about communion is not a ritual to be observed, but it's a blessing to be received. And we talked about on the night that Jesus was portrayed, that he had the last supper with the disciples and he gave these instructions. And you can find that in Mark 14, Matthew 26, Luke 22, or John 13, whichever uh, gospel you seem to like the best. But let's get back into, we're talking about these tables. And so when we even think about the, the tables, um, we yesterday we went over and we found that there were two tables. So let's look at that scripture. Uh, First Corinthians 10, 21. So I don't make sure I have enough time today. It says, you cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. And so we realize now that there are two tables. And I asked you on yesterday, which table are you feasting from? Which table are you sitting at? Because we now realize that there are two tables. There's a table of the Lord. And there's a table of the devils. And so we know that when we're sitting at the table of the Lord, that you're a partaker of his grace, that you are sharing his life. We went over that yesterday. So when I take the bread and drink of the cup that I'm drinking and taking the bread and drinking of the cup of the of God, I'm sharing um, in the life of Jesus. And so in that, we've got to remember that and also um, know that when we don't make the right decisions, when we sit at the wrong table, remember Paul is addressing the church of Corinth, because uh, like I said, they were off the chain. They were just doing their own thing and, you know, operating how they wanted to operate. And he had to address this thing that you cannot be sitting at two different tables that when you remember when we talked about communion yesterday, we talked about it's the sharing of life. That's what the bread is. That's what the drink of the cup is about. And so whichever table that you're sitting at, whichever table you're feasting from, you're sharing in the life of that thing. And so when we talk about wholeness and you say I can't seem to get to wholeness and stay to wholeness it's because you're feasting at the wrong table and what happens is this you're sharing the life of whatever whichever table you're seated at and so when you're seated at the table as quoted in um, verse 21 when you're sit seated at the table of devils that's why your problems are worse because the problem has attached itself to you because you're sharing in the life of that table. And so you've got to be mindful of the decisions that you make that you are in one way and in another. So Sunday, you can't feast at the Lord's table and take of the bread and drink of the cup of the Lord's table. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you're supping with the table at the, 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 mm, the table of the devil. You cannot do that. When you do that, that's when you find out that the problems are worse because the demons are attached to it and so you try to get out of something but they try to hold you back it won't permanently go away because it has attached itself to you and it continues to come back and so when we think about wholeness and we no longer want to be broken we've got to make sure that we are communing at the correct table you know when we think about the theology of this thing 
um, the, like the transubstantiation um, that the Catholic Church used, they the priests would bless um, the the cup and they would bless the bread and they really truly believed that it transformed into the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why nobody could touch it. So even if somebody touched it with that theology, with that theory, they felt like you literally dropped the body and the, the blood of Jesus Christ. That was the transubstantiation. But then there was a, consub, a consubstantiation where it was like you were the carriers of the body and the blood. And then we had the commemoration, which is not literally um, what that called, not literally called, mm, not literal, but a memorial of Jesus being reminded of what he said. And so with that being said, we're going to go over now to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 we're going to go just one chapter over getting back to these tables remember with the table if you seated at the wrong table it's like that is re the reason why all of these things keep coming back and i like to say it like this that's over in chapter 10 but we thank god that there's a chapter 11 because in chapter 11 and i'm going to start reading in verse let's start at verse 23 no let's stick read of verse 24 it says and when he had given thanks because for when um i started verse 23 for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and so right here we see that in getting right off it said he gave thanks and so when we think about the commemoration of it that's what it's about remember we talked about the eucharist the greek word meaning give thanks we're giving thanks it says that god when he when he had taken it he break it and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me and so we see right here that immediately jesus began to give thanks he began to give thanks for it. he was giving thanks you know you know you ask like what was he giving thanks for he, he did this for us he said that my body is broken for you and so anytime that we are at the table of the Lord, it is a um, time where we are being commemorative that we would give thanks that the body was broken for us, that he did this for us. We ought to give thanks that we're no longer broken, but we're whole. We ought to give thanks that we're no longer sick, but we're healed. We ought to give thanks that I no longer have to operate in a sin-filled life, but now, no, Jesus did this, that my sins may be forgiven. And so it says that, and when he had, had given thanks, he break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you to do this in remembrance of me it says after the same manner also he took the cup and when he is sup, saying the cup I'm sorry, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink in it. Remembrance of me. Remember back in the Old Testament, they were sacrificing animals as a remission of sins. But now we're in the New Testament and God has given us Jesus. So you've got to understand really what communion is. Communion is a covenant authority to proclaim his death. So when we get in verse 26, it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, up, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Listen, so when we look at verse 26, we realize that verse 26 is a proclamation of his death. It's an opportunity where you get to preach that God was, um, his, his death has happened and he got up from the grave. You get to preach about how great God is. Again, it's a covenant authority to, pro to, to proclaim death, to preach a sermon. And so you get the authority to talk about about the death of Jesus and what the death of Jesus did for you that the that, that when you partake in the the, the uh, eating the breaking of the bread and you partake in the drinking of the cup that it is a proclamation that you are now authorized to preach your own sermon about what God has done for you you are authorized to preach your own sermon about how God found you in the valley but now you're up on the mountaintop you have now had the authority to preach about what God has done for you. You get to preach about the sharing of life that you are now connected glory to God to the source that because he died for you that it was a remission of your sins that you no longer, you don't have to sacrifice an animal but God has sacrificed his son for you. See this is what happens when I sit at the Lord's table when I'm not at the devil's table. When I'm not now because see when I'm sitting at the Lord's table remember those devils and those demons that are at his table they can no longer attach themselves to me because i choose
I now have freed God up to work his covenant in my life because of the death of Christ is now I'm at the table of communion and now listen here's the good thing about that when I'm at the table of this communion now this shows that the enemy has been defeated when we look back at um, Ephesians 6 12 because at that table of the devils they invite you your flesh they invite you at that table and that's how you stay there because you've communed at the wrong table but when we look at Ephesians and realize that Ephesians 6 12 reminds us that when I'm gonna read it verbatim we don't wrestle against flesh blood and against our principalities and the powers or rulers of darkness of this world or the spiritual wickedness of high places and so we realize and then also that Colossians has reminded us that the devil has been defeated that the enemy has been defeated that he's under our feet and so we want to always make sure that we understand what um, communion is about here's the other great thing about communion that when I um, partake in it when I realize that I have a covenant authority in this thing I now have the authority to tell these demons and these devils to go to hell I now have the authority to tell them go back to where you came from go on back home and when you go on back home you take your sickness and disease with you you take the anger with you you take the jealousy with you you take the rebellion with you see when I take this communion when I break of the bread and when I sup of this cup I'm now able I've got this covenant authority glory to God to tell the table that I used to sit at the devil's table that's been defeated go straight to hell go right back to home where you came from because now I'm, I'm, I'm at a place where I'm now preaching because now I get to proclaim his death it says this it says for as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup you do show this to Lord's death till he come he hasn't come back yet so now I get to proclaim his goodness I get to proclaim his greatness I get to proclaim just how good he's been in my life I get to proclaim just and it says as often as you want to do this so anytime you feel like the world is coming up against you anytime you feel like circumstances and situations are trying to overwhelm you he said that at any time that I can do this in remembrance of him remember what he's already done for me remember what he said remember that he said by his stripes that I am already healed when I take communion it puts me in another element it puts me in a new environment it puts me in the presence of God it puts me at the table and there is peace at the table there is joy at the table there is a praise at the table glory to God this is what happens when I partake in holy communion and so you've got to realize that holy communion is not a ritual or something that we do as believers holy communion is the way that I proclaim that his death was powerful holy communion is a way that I proclaim that God he was able to work his covenant through his son Jesus Christ it is a way that I proclaim that I am a Christian and that I have the power to do everything that Jesus has the power to do that I am truly made in his image that God is the Messiah that God is King that God is Lord that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this is what Holy Communion allows me to do amen listen that's the daily dosage for today the power of Holy Communion. Tomorrow we're going to pick this thing up and we're going to start talking about the miracles that happen when I partake in Holy Communion. Amen. So listen, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's do it together. Say God wants me whole and I am Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, a.k.a. the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there. Have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. I'll see you in the morning.